kids, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, we're making mushroom pierogies from Poland as part of my Christmas Around the World series, Christmas in Poland. So I worked with a friend that I met through the internet, Marta, to help me figure out the best way to make pierogies at home, and I'm really excited to share them with you now because they're super delicious. <music> So pierogies are basically dumplings. We're gonna fill ours today with mushrooms, but first we have to make the pierogi dough. So in this big bowl, I've got my flour and salt, and then I've got a little bit of water here, and I'm gonna crack an egg in it and beat that up together. And Marta was telling me that there's um, this concept called Meg. Uh, I'm a little unclear on the concept, but I think it's like, um, it's a type of fasting where you don't eat any animal products during uh, the Christmas season, so you're basically vegan, I think. Um, but then she also told me that the egg dough is way better. So if you want to keep these vegan, you can use some vegetable oil instead of egg, but um, the egg dough just makes a really, really nice soft dough. So just like when you're making like pasta or anything like that, we're gonna whisk this together a little bit, make a little hole in the center, and then add in all of that and then just start mixing that up. Eventually we'll have to get our hands in there. Okay, so now once it's kind of coming together into a ball like this, get a little bit of extra flour here. We just kind of knead it in the bowl until it comes together into a nice smooth dough. So this looks good. You know, it's kind of coming together into a ball. It's not dry, but it's not sticky. Yeah, this will be good. So we just wanna set this aside for about 20 minutes to let it rest while we start on our mushroom filling. For the mushroom filling, we're gonna use a combination of dried and fresh. I've got here some oyster mushrooms that were dried and I just poured hot water over them and let them sit for about eight hours. Uh, traditionally, uh, porcini mushrooms would be used and those are also known as king bolete or king boli, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, and it was a new name for them that I'd never heard. But I could not find dried or fresh porcini mushrooms anywhere here. So oyster mushrooms are gonna have to do the trick for me. So just wanna squeeze that liquid out. We're gonna hang on to that soaking liquid and then just finely chop these mushrooms. And lots of different fillings are made. People will use like mashed potatoes and cottage cheese or mushrooms and sauerkraut. Uh, I don't think they ever really have meat in them. Just wanna get it really small because the pierogi are actually um, pretty small dumplings, so you don't want to have giant chunks of filling that might break the dough later on. That looks great. Okay, now we're ready to saute all this together. For the filling, I've got a warm skillet here. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil and add some onions. And I chopped up the onions and the fresh mushrooms in a food chopper to get them really, really small. These are just some regular, like, white mushrooms. So we want to cook this over a pretty high heat because we're trying to, we want to get them really soft and browned and delectable. I'm going to add some salt and pepper and my reconstituted oyster mushrooms. Okay, so I'm just going to let them sit here on the skillet to get a little bit of color on them. And then I'm going to add a little bit of our soaking liquid. I'm just going to pour it through a little strainer because with dried mushrooms, sometimes there can be some grit or sand, so you want to make sure that you get don't include that. Okay, so I'm just going to let this simmer or bubble like this until the liquid has cooked off and we almost have like a mushroom paste. Okay, so after about five minutes, the water has pretty much cooked off. You can see that the some of the mushrooms are starting to take on a little bit more of a golden color instead of the grayness of mushrooms. So this looks good. I'm gonna actually turn off the heat now. We'll set this aside and just let it cool. So I'll go ahead and spread it out again. Uh, we'll let it cool while we start rolling out and cutting our pierogi dough. All right, so I've got my floured surface here. My little dough ball. This is a really easy to work with dough because of the egg. And I just wanna start rolling it out to really, really thin, like maybe an eighth of an inch. And see how it, when I'm rolling it out, it kind of springs back a little bit. A little bit is okay. If it's springing back too much, that means you probably just need to leave, leave the dough to rest a little bit and let the gluten relax. 
So you can see how thin this is, quite thin. And I've got a three inch cutter. Ideally, it would not have a scalloped edge, but um, you gotta work with what you got, people. So we're just gonna start cutting out our circles. So I've got my mushroom filling here. It's still a little bit warm, but uh, it's okay. I just put it in this little bowl and then put it in the fridge. So you just wanna get a pretty small amount, like mm, a teaspoon, maybe even a little bit less than a teaspoon. Put that right in the middle. Just carefully fold it over. I mean, you don't have to be too careful because the dough is pretty tough. And then pinch the edges closed. And I haven't found that you need any kind of water to seal them, but if, if it's not sticking, you could probably just get your hands a little bit wet. And once you've got it sealed like this, I'm just gonna go around the edges and pinch it out a little bit to make the edges a little bit flatter and wider to give me a little bit more to work with to go back in and make some little pleats. Boop, kind of like when you're pleating a pie crust or something. Very, very cute, guys. I'm gonna flour my plate here just so they don't stick to the plate and just transfer them to a plate. Okay, so once you've got all of your pierogies folded, I've got some water here that's boiling. It should be a little bit deeper, but I want y'all to be able to see inside it. So I'm gonna take another risk. And then we'll just gently drop our little dumplings in there and they sink at first and then as they cook they'll float to the surface and this only takes a couple of minutes and then as they finish cooking i'm going to transfer them to a plate and this time instead of flouring your plate you want to um, just put a little bit of oil on it so they don't stick to the plate once they're cooked okay. a little bit of lotion there okay good all right these look great. So they get kind of like, like wrinkly old man balls. Sorry, Poland. All right, so I can start pulling them out and setting them on the tray. Just try to get the excess water off. And then you can totally serve them like this, just boiled. But I'm gonna do a little extra thing to make them a little bit fancier. We're gonna fry some onions and then pan fry the pierogi so they get a little bit crispy. For our crispy fried onion topping, we're gonna do a little bit more oil. Butter is also good. I'll probably add a little bit of butter later on. And I've just got some really thinly sliced onion rings. Just get these cooked. And the amount of like brownness that you want on these little onion rings is a matter of personal taste. I think I'm gonna get them pretty brown. So I've got this over a medium high heat and I'm just gonna let them sit here and sizzle for a few minutes until they're really soft and brown and starting to get caramelized. Once your onions are brown to your liking, mine are uh, smoking hot like me. Maybe a little too brown, but I never did shun burnt food. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. You could use a little bit more oil if you wanna keep it meg. And then we'll add some of our little pierogies here and get them a little bit brown. And I've got my heat down to like a medium heat because I don't want that butter to burn and I obviously don't want to burn my beautiful homemade pierogies that I just spent like an hour making. Oh, there we go. Yeah, boy. Okay, I think these are ready. And there you have it. I hope you like this mushroom pierogi recipe. Please check out my website for other Polish recipes and this recipe in printable form and a little bit about Poland, the country, and Christmas in Poland. And speaking of Christmas, if you're still looking for Christmas gifts for your friends and loved ones, might I suggest my cookbooks. Look at this one, it's called Learn to Cook. It's for grown-ups. it's really funny, and it's comprehensive. And look, it's in print. And people that have been uh, watching the show for a long time, you probably already have your copy of the ebook of the Breakfast Taco Book, but look guys, it's in print now. Look, like this, it's got colored pictures and I wrote um, more stuff about breakfast tacos and more recipes and it's just really nice, I love it. 
So this will be available soon. I'll let you know when, and people that subscribe to the newsletter will probably find out first. So if you want to subscribe to that, then um, I'll put a link to that also. So yay, Poland, Christmas presents. I pretty much just solved all your problems in one fell swoop. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time for more Christmas around the world. Ooh. I forgot to taste these. <laughs> I got really excited, okay. Man, those are good. Dang-a-lang, I did it again. Bye, guys.